Well, Jesse, thanks so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I'm absolutely ecstatic to be here. Thanks for having me. You guys are doing amazing things in this space. Now, when I looked at your website and saw that you were a former race car driver that had gone, you know, 300 plus miles per hour, I'm thinking, okay, maybe she like paid some organization, you know, like you pay and you jump in the car and they kind of take you and you're like, Hey, I'm a race car driver now. Then I started digging a little bit more and you're not a, just a former race car driver. You're like a mega star in that world. Like you were at least. Um, yeah. <laughs> why, why did you transition out of that and transition into network marketing? Yeah, it's a really great conversation. And I'll try to give you the short and sweet, really nitty gritty of it. But a long story short is my whole life, I wanted to be two things. And that was a race car driver and a mom. And in the professional race car leagues, it is really very much the good old boys club. You know, as you said, usually if you had a good chunk of change in your pocket, that would buy you a seat. If you were born into it, uh, that would get you a seat, right? And that was not me. I am just, uh, I don't want to say poor, but I grew up very humble with beginnings um, in upstate New York to um, two amazingly hardworking parents, but my dad passed away young. And so we just went through a series of unfortunate uh, events growing up and race car driving had my heart. And I watched a lot of other people do it as a hobby and they would spend thousands of dollars and we didn't have 50 bucks, right? To do that on the weekends. So for me, I just decided that I was going to finally win at something in life because I really did not excel in the sports arena and such growing up. And I felt like race car drive, like all you have to do is like have a really good team with a good motor. So I could probably do that, right? <laughs> and for me, it was just... I fell in love with the idea of being able to use race car driving as a platform to inspire other people. So that was honestly probably what had me going out for five years, shaking hands and handing out resumes and getting, you know, thousands of no's spending $60,000 because I didn't have that money to buy a seat because I didn't have, um, you know, somebody in the family to get me the job, but I was very driven to open up the doors for those that were on the same level as me and were coming in behind me. And that was really what, what did it. And just so people have a background and I know most of the people listening have no background in racing at all. Um, give them just a taste of what you did in that world and what you accomplished. Yeah. So these were cars that go zero to a hundred in less than a second, five G forces off the start line. It's a quarter mile straight shot. So 1,320 feet and you would go over 300 miles per hour in about four and a half seconds. Um, these cars had the power to get you to the finish line safely. And as the winner, which it did for me over 650 times in five years, but they also had the power to kill you. Um, these cars, when they explode, they explode. And actually, I actually had many good friends that passed away driving these cars, whether it be the engine explosion or, you know, crossing the center line or parachute failures, etc. So, um, you know, these cars, you really couldn't get in there. In my case, I was a younger girl who was dating back then. And I remember my boss screaming at me, I don't care if your boyfriend broke up with you this weekend, you get in this car, you aren't thinking about your stupid boyfriend, you're thinking about this car, and it could kill you. And um, that was a really big learning moment for me. And it's something that I've actually applied to everything in my life over the years that it's very much an all in um, approach usually gets you all in results. Mm -hmm. But I know the majority of your listeners here are women. And I think we as women have a problem of multitasking too much. So I'm going to like speed here right into maybe something that we didn't intend to get here yet, David. But man, that was something for me that I understood probably was the result of me also not having what I wanted previously when I was trying in, you know, high school sports and stuff. I was never 100% in anything. Mm -hmm. So that was a really beautiful thing for me is, you know, the, the reality of what I needed to be behind the wheel of that car. And, you know, my boss said to me, if you want to be a world champion then you have to train like a world champion, you have to drive like a world champion long before you ever become her. And in my case, I'm just pretty darn stubborn. So uh, I went to my very first race car event and there was seven other guys there, all men at least uh, 20 years experience 
on me, all of them, and nobody would shake my hand at the driver's meeting. Of course, I cried for half a second in the corner after we left, and then I basically used that as the fuel that I needed to go out and kick all of their butts that night in front of 40,000 people, and I never looked back. I had, in the five years behind the wheel of that car, I raced over 650 races, and I won all but one. And so this may sound, those of you that are listening, like I'm tooting my horn, but it's actually all about something I just touched base on. And that is what I call the rush rule. And that is that there are only two things we have control over in life. And that is our belief and our effort. And when you show up with 100% in both, very often you will get 100% results. And at the very least, you will at least have no regrets and you will feel happiness and joy. And that's to me, what's even more beautiful than actually maybe achieving the goal, right? It's who we become along the journey. Mm -hmm. I watched a couple of interviews from uh, quite a few years ago of you at the racetrack and, you know, I'm looking all around and I'm going, wow, it looks like Jesse's the only woman anywhere in the, you know, whole pit area. I mean, how did you deal with that? Um, I assumed that there had to have been interactions and conversations that were less than helpful. Um, how, how did you navigate all of that? Yeah, uh, it's a really good, interesting point that you're pulling out because it's something that I sometimes don't talk about enough. Um, in that arena, it really was the good old boys club, especially I was the only female driving in that division in those five years. Um, I actually went on to, so these were called jet power dragsters. I went on to get licensed in the highest of um, drag racing cars that you ever could top fuel and NHRA funny car. Uh, I did not get to drive professionally on the full circuit just because that was in 2007 and eight when I was transitioning and we had the huge uh, economic decline. Mm -hmm. So I was looking to, you know, I was pitching fortune 500 companies for million, multi-million dollar corporate sponsorships. And that just, that was the first money that, that went right. Um, but I very often, like I said to you, five years got passed up. No. And, you know, got those opportunities offered to other men who did not have the same resume as me, um, or experience or the same look at guys, I can chat, right? Hello, chatty Kathy right here. It's one thing that God gave me a gift and that is the gift of gab. And I can really make it not about me, but about the other people and the lessons that can be learned. And still that wasn't enough so very often. And like I said, there were plenty of times that I found myself in a corner crying, but you know, my mom taught me young that, you know, we can, this isn't, this is me paraphrasing. This is what I've created from it now today, but basically you can quit today, but you can't quit tomorrow. And I'm getting goosebumps even saying it to you right now, because that's been another huge thing that has helped me achieve the things that I've wanted to in my life, despite everything that was stacked against me. What does that mean for you? You can quit today, but you can't quit tomorrow. Yeah. It means it's okay to be hurt, to feel discouraged, to be mad, be sad, any of the things, right? Um, feel it. In fact, I encourage people to not avoid the pain, feel the pain, use it as fuel to then go out and push forward for the things that you want. So for me, a lot of times, oh my gosh, right now I'm in the throes of coming. I don't know. Are we coming out of COVID at the time of this recording? But I am a mom of five. I technically own three businesses and I went from having a part-time nanny and a part-time house cleaner to being stuck at home running three, six and seven figure businesses with five babies ages nine to at the time, two and a half months. I don't think I've ever done anything harder in my life. And I've delivered five, nine pound babies naturally, dude, that like nothing has been harder than this. And there were plenty of times that I quit. Like I just quit that day. And and sometimes I quit for two days in a row because it was just so hard. But I have this thing. I tell myself, you know, when there's a problem, you have an opportunity to take that problem and use it for good. So I pick back up the next day and I dive back in with that 100% belief in action that I can do, have, or be whatever it is that I desire. And I think a lot of times the, the starting again tomorrow or picking back up again tomorrow is harder than quitting indefinitely in the moment. Maybe the long term it's not harder, but in the moment it is. They're like, oh, to me, 
I just try to be as real as possible and be as human as possible and tell you that what I teach is something that will absolutely give you a lot of happiness, a lot of joy, a lot of success, but it will not be easy. It will not be easy at all. I try to teach you guys, um, you know, those who follow me, whether it be on a podcast like this or in my coaching industry, et cetera, it's a work smarter, not harder approach. And, you know, that's one of the things it's, you know, working harder for me would be to just quit altogether, you know, and if I'm just willing to show back up for the minute, once you get back into it, it feels good. It also becomes a habit, right? For me, it's a force of, of habit now. And what we didn't get into and we probably can go to next is kind of how I went from being a professional race car driver and into the network marketing space and into my own coaching industry space, because I, I sound like I've got all my, you know, crap together. But the truth is I don't, I struggled for a few years in a place where I was very depressed and lonely and wondering why I was on this earth. And basically transitioning out of racing. Yes. Yes. Because I became a mom. And again, it was the only thing I ever wanted to be. I was willing to retire and walk away from that. I didn't want to chase it forever. Um, The women in the drag racing world, there were quite a few of them that had chased it for years and they were 40 years old and they were divorced and they never had babies and they were starting life all over again. And I I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a mom and I had a wonderful man who I'm now still married to uh, in my life. And it just felt like the right thing to do. But I had a moment where I was like, man, I have a good life, but I want more. Sure. sure. For me, I realized it was purpose that was missing. Right. We talked about those race car driving days and it was so much more than just driving fast race cars. For me, it was about using it as a platform to inspire others. Um, And I honestly think that's how a lot of women end up finding network marketing nowadays, because it, it just opens up a door for them to be willing to say like, my life's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you want more, it's scary to think of how do you start all over again? In my case, mid thirties, right? I'm 37. I have to think about that now I'm 37. And, um, I joke, I still don't know what I want to do (laughs) when I grow up because I'm always transitioning and evolving and growing, but network marketing was an amazing business in a box opportunity for me. And that's what a lot of women need. It's just something that feels doable. And that's what network marketing is. Mm -hmm. It's something that's already kind of in place, gives you the training, gives you a team, gives you a support system. Um, Now, when you started in network marketing, my guess is that there were people around you. I don't know, but often we'll say, ah, this is a pyramid scheme. Nobody makes money. It's only the people at the top. It's only people like Jesse Harris Boughton that get, you know, that make the money. It's not you. Like, did you hear those voices? How did you respond to them? So first and foremost, the person I heard it from was myself, my own inner voices. Let's just be honest. Um, I will, I'm not afraid to share like all of the names of the companies I've been with and all of that. So as long as you're okay with it, David, I will. Um, Beachbody is who I first found because I was in a place where um, I couldn't lose 20 pounds after kid two and I was frustrated as all heck. And so I just, of course, liked what I saw with some other people sharing it. And so went all into Beachbody, it's actually how I found personal development, which has obviously been a game changer for me because I wanted to become a certified life coach and then evolve into business coaching and so on. But um, man, I was my, my own worst enemy at first. Like, who are you to get into this now? There's 400,000 reps. You're never going to grow it to what you want it to be. Mm. And I heard that from a lot of others as well. But for me, I very much kept my, um, my purpose and my mission first and foremost Yes, of course, I wanted to grow a big business and help a lot of people and make a lot of money, but I made it about the people that I could help. And hopefully at the time, all I wanted to do was help them avoid what I had fallen into in a place that was very dark. And I lost 20 pounds in six weeks that I couldn't lose in over a year using Beachbody products. So I was really excited, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that it was anything magical that Beachbody gave. I don't ever want anybody to think that it was their Shakeology, which I love. Um, it was a good combination of me finally going all in. Remember, 100% actually finally showed up five days a week for those workouts in my basement at 4.30 in the morning mm. while my kids were sleeping. And, you know, I did eat well 80% of the time, finally, instead of making excuses. But um, for me, I was my own worst enemy in it and lots of other people. And I rose up over the next two years to the top 1% of that company. And there was already 400,000 reps in it when I started. Wow. So. 
I don't ever want someone to think that they can't do anything and everything that they want Mm -hmm. if they come at it from the right angle. I think what happens is a lot of times people aren't, I teach building personal brand and I know we're probably going to chat about that here as well, but you can't sell products. We do not sell products services or offers. What I teach people that I work with to do is to create a personal brand around selling what's on the other side of that product, service, or offer. Mm -hmm. And that's usually some sort of result or solution, right? To a problem they have, whether it be Mm -hmm. that they want to decrease pain or increase pleasure. And that's where people get hung up, right? A lot of times they will watch someone in network marketing who is just pitching products and they're growing it but they were the founders they were in 15 years ago. And now people aren't joining them because of what they're pitching the personal brand. They're joining them because they're number one in the company Mm -hmm. and then they can get away with selling services Mm -hmm. or products. Anybody of us who's new and starting can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned a personal brand. And when I look at your website, I mean, I, you'd have to dig deep to find any kind of product that you sell in terms of a network marketing product. Obviously you do coaching and consulting and that's easier to find. Uh, Why did you, or did you, was there a shift at the beginning uh, or I'm sorry, did you begin uh, with network marketing with a personal brand or was there a shift along the way? Yeah. So I originally started um, with Beachbody, like I said, and then I went into, I became a certified life coach, plain and simple because I knew I wasn't going to keep myself accountable unless I had to keep other people accountable. Um, And so I kind of naturally started pairing them together and just met people where they were at throughout the years. I actually have transitioned out. I haven't actively sold anything with Beachbody in over two years, but I will tell you um, I still make a weekly commission residual income every single week on that. It's, it's again, it tells you how great that model can be. Even though people tell you it's a pyramid scheme, everything's a pyramid scheme. Let's just be honest, right? I own a brick and mortar physical therapy business. My husband and I are at the top and I have 15 more people that work down here for us and it all works its way up. We definitely serve it back down because that's who we are. But in the grand scheme of it, a lot of people look at that network marketing. And as you, you touched on earlier, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pyramid scheme. Listen, Anybody can start, you know, number 20,000 and go to number one. All they have to do is get the right amount of people underneath them. And I love um, what network marketing can do for you to build momentum. And so I teach very simple, um, duplicatable processes and systems. I teach, this is something I believe wholeheartedly, especially as a mom, but Systems simplify processes and processes are the pathway to power, right? It's why network marketing works because all it is, is a simple hand-me-down system. And so I teach that same thing for the women who follow me and just have their own private business they're trying to to grow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have transitioned over the years to where just maybe I don't do just network marketing or just coaching. I now do a little bit of it all. And so um, it's only because I found that, it's not really any different whether you're doing network marketing or your own personal brand with private coaching or selling products. It's really about doing the same um, simple marketing systems. Mm -hmm. Now, would you suggest if somebody's starting a network marketing that they would build a brand, even if they're not going to offer coaching, let's just say that they're offering, like I know right now you have um, a product line called Savvy, S-A-V-V-I. Yes. And uh, you offer that, but you're not necessarily out pitching it all of the time. Um, would, if somebody signed up with you, you would suggest that they would start a brand and even if they're not doing coaching, how would that work? Yeah. Yeah. Whether they're doing network marketing with a product, whether they're doing their own coaching or even their own private um, product, I absolutely believe that what's going to make you stand out right now is creating a personal brand. So we touched earlier on not selling that product or or service or offer and it being really a result or a solution on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, it has to be something that's highly transformational. So People don't just buy life improvement offers. Like look at it yourself. Be honest. Even if you're listening to this right now, like take a pause, press pause and think about what you have invested in, in the last six months. Cause that's the easiest to remember. Most likely whatever you purchased in was something that you felt was really going to massively make your life better in some way. Even if it's just a shirt, as you mentioned, the network marketing company I'm with now is called Savvy, S-A-V-V-I. I love their clothes. 
And the reason I love them is because they're not just clothes. They're clothes that make me feel like a confidence queen to show up here with you on this call. Um, I can talk about it outside. I love a good bling and earring. You guys can't see it that are listening to the podcast, but I got some big old earrings on right now. I got a little lipstick on. There's a few things that make me feel like Jesse Harris Fountain, queen millionaire mompreneur, right? That's the, the title of my brand. And I believe that if I were to have showed up here with no makeup on and not a shirt that I feel, not that it's anything fancy, I mean, it's a little black top, but it feels like butter. It feels brown, nice, looks cute. Um, I'm not going to come with the same intensity and excitement and vibe that I'm giving to you in this podcast. Mm -hmm. So for me, when we talk about personal brand um, and and whether it be with network marketing or your own coaching, you got to think about it, right? People want something that is, Um, highly transformational, makes them feel like their life is going to be so much better. And if I'm showcasing to you guys all the time with my personal brand, as you said, you went to my website, you couldn't find savvy on it anywhere, right? That's intentional. I don't want women to come there and just kind of make up their mind of what they think about me. Oh, and she's in network marketing. Oh, because that's what happens you know, the women that actually come and follow me on Instagram and they love the fact that I am showing my 4.30 a.m. workouts. They love the fact that I'm teaching them that I have what I call rush state. Rush is an acronym for revving up self-happiness. It's part of my first book. And so when I say get into rush state, it means get yourself into a position where you feel like that queen, that millionaire mompreneur that you want to be now long before you ever are her. And for me, music is my muse. So I have a good power jam playlist that I am pumping myself up to every single day. It's an intentional choice, right? Mm -hmm. We all have power inside of us, but a lot of times we use our power to hold us back or tear us down instead of pursue more of what we want. And so what I showcase as my personal brand is just all of these things that make me, me, and that's what attracts people. And then that's what make them makes them pick me over someone else selling that clothing line or me over someone else that's got coaching uh, packages, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So you're, that's, you're a little wacky. I mean, I, I liked it because I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of wacky. You know, like I, <laughs> people are like, Dave, you're so serious. And then they find out and they're like, whoa. He's like, I mean, you're dancing in a bikini. <laughs> a five, right? A five. Uh, and, and here's the funny thing. I was watching that video. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? And then you've got the bar of the text right across your stomach. And I'm like, yeah. oh, she's going to keep that there the whole time. Bam. It went away. Nope. I was like, this girl is, she is courageous. She is yeah. just going for it. Yeah. So you, yeah, I love how you bring all of who you are to the table. If somebody is getting ready to start, or maybe they're in the middle of starting um, network marketing, Um, And they want to build a personal brand. How do they do that? Like, what are some critical steps? What does that look like? Yeah. So first and foremost, you, you absolutely need to think about how you cannot sell a product, how you can sell what's on the other side of that. And a lot of times in network marketing, it is very often the same thing that attracted you to that product. This is something people don't think about. I joke, I am my own best dream customer. When I'm creating content, for example, you were just speaking about a reel, um, the new Instagram feature, right? They have these reels where you can teach something in 15 seconds. And um, I just happen to have my swimsuit on from swimming in the pool. And I'm like, whatever, I'm going to do it now because you know what? It'll catch people's attention, number one. Number two, because they see that lifestyle that I live, right? They're always like, Oh, she's showing her baby bump belly or, or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, what I, I want to be as real as possible. Even if that's shoving a bag of chips in my face, because 80% of the time I'm eating clean, but it's those things that make people relate to you. So, um, you know, I, I tell a lot of my clients, let your freak flag fly. If you curse like a sailor and you're comfortable with that, don't hide it don't hide that. Don't be afraid to, since the majority of our girls on this podcast are are women listeners, don't be afraid, like feeling like you always have to have your makeup on and stuff done. Just show, I mean, that day I had no makeup on in a swimsuit that probably more than should have been hanging out was hanging out. But I'm like, Hey, this is me. I'm going to tell you, if any of you don't listen to my podcast, you should, David, you'll appreciate this. 
So uh, just last week, I was recording a podcast that airs in just a couple weeks, and my nine-year-old was sitting in here with me. He was just snuggling. And, and one thing that I like to showcase about my brand, and, and this is a giving, this is an example of what we're talking about right now, but it's that, man, if I can do this with all these things stacked against me, right, who used to eat ramen noodles for five years, siphoning gas out of my car because I need, dude, I have all the stories, okay? Um, if anybody like me can do this, girl, you can too. And my son is sitting here in the middle of this podcast recording and he lets one rip. He toots, farts, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And I could have edited it out, but I actually chose not to. And I do that with a lot of things, whether it's my little one, where you can hear him guzzling and he's nursing on the podcast or, uh, gosh, I was, re- I actually did a training a couple weeks ago for like 1500 women. My three-year-old walked in buck naked and I was leading the training and nobody skipped a beat. I just kept going and they were like in the chat box. Oh my God, she's crazy. I just don't let anything stop me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what that's my personality never used to guys. I'll be honest with you. It took me 37 years to get to the place where I don't give a crap. Uh, it's an intentional choice. I have to lean into every single day. But I just showcase what makes me, me, and that's what women relate to. So think about who you really are at the core when you're sitting there with your best friend or your spouse and you're just talking and you're not worried about anybody listening. That is number one, be you because there's thousands of other out there that are doing it and they're going to pick them over you mm-hmm. if you are not letting your freak flag fly, whatever that looks like. Okay. So how do um, I sell though? How do I sell a product if I have to make people look for it? How does that work? Well, I actually don't normally recommend to people that they have to go look for what I'm doing. Most network marketing people who are coming to me and building, that's their main thing. So they would be showcasing it more than me. Um, but they also might not have a, a website. I tell people, you don't need a website to start and grow a big business. Nowadays with social media, the way that it is, you definitely don't. Believe me, I know it's important to have your own you know, email platform in place that you're collecting, but I actually am a huge advocate for text marketing right now. Um, text marketing is the new email marketing. There's a 90% open rate versus 20%. There's huge engagement. And so what I'm doing is... Um, getting people onto a text marketing platform. And then I'm sending them a weekly text and that goes to my Instagram stories, right? I'm like, Hey, new products launching tomorrow. And I'll do that every Thursday with a little fun thing. You can shop tomorrow at one Um, and then I say, if you want to get the details or get a discount code, text me at this number with the word shop. And then I'm hitting them that way. So you can do whatever feels right to you. But the reason Um, a stream of multiple, like a side stream of income. It's kind of like a snap on that I'm doing to my coaching business. Cause I swore off MLM. I'm just going to be honest. I swore off network marketing a long time ago. It felt too hard. I felt like I had to educate people so much. I was working way too many hours, which wasn't why I built my business because that's what Beachbody was. You really had to hold people's hand. You needed to educate them and convince them that these products were worthy. Mm-hmm. I'm selling clothes now. Women love clothes. There is nothing fancy about it. Like you either like it or you don't and you're moving on, but I don't have to like, Oh, let me teach you about what these things are made of. And then let's put you in a group where I'm going to be there available for you for free all the time. Network marketing has a bad taste because of things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, This company is doing it differently than any others. There's no monthly uh, fees. There's no purchase requirements, right? So this sells itself. I literally don't do anything extra. I just mention it Mm -hmm. and then mention it again and again and again, which is going to lead me to my second point of it's important to be consistent. If you're not annoying yourself with how much you're pitching your stuff, then you aren't doing it right. (laughs) Mm. There's going to be people that are annoyed by that, but then they're not your dream customer. Okay. You are meant to be a magnet. You are meant to attract the women or the men, whoever your customer is that wants what you want or that what you have, and you are meant to repel all the others. Mm -hmm. And so the way that we do that is being consistent, consistently showcasing your product, not the same thing over and over a different way, right? This week, I might talk about how these clothes make me feel confident. Next week, I might talk about how these clothes make me show up to my workouts and give my all even when I don't feel like it. The following week, I might talk about how these clothes have allowed me to help 
50% of my audience who were too afraid to start their own business that were basically sitting there waiting for me to finally tell them about this business in a box opportunity that only cost them the amount of some product to get into, right? It's you all- it, you think that could work for me? Like, do you think I could be showcasing savvy products? A hundred percent. Like I could be wearing them and women would love that and they would be drawn to it. Like, do you feel like that would work? Well, they don't have a men's line officially yet. It does come out and launch. This company is in pre-launch. So you can absolutely wear the women's clothing if you want now, David. <laughs> or you can get your wife too, right? Or other people. But they're coming out with a men's line when they launch this fall, as well as a kid's line. So I actually am talking to men. The men that aren't afraid to market and sell to women right now who are looking for a great opportunity like what we have. I'm going to be honest. I think most likely your audience is 50% sitting there waiting for something that feels right for them to start because they're in that transition phase, right? They're very much about growing their life. And wouldn't it be cool if we could grow a business that gave us more meaning, money, and freedom in our life, right? And then you also have that 50% that maybe already do have their own business, but wow, this could be a great affiliate snap on like Jesse just mentioned it was for mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, hands down a hundred percent. And we're going to just be real. It's those first few men that are really going to make some waves, right? Oh my gosh. You're pulling me on. I can feel it. Did I sell you? I'm yeah. Feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> okay. So you have a free download on your website called the clarity cash flow checklist, clarity yeah. cash flow. Checklist. <laughs> Say that three times. <laughs> and you talked about a need to focus on one result for one core audience with one core offer and one core platform. What does that mean? And why is that important to you? Yeah, this is such a great question. So um, we talked really briefly early about the rush rule, which I say is 100% belief in action that's going to give you success and at the very least joy, right? Where you don't have any regrets because you showed up with everything you got and you got the best results you could that time around. You're going to go back in. When I originally uh, got started in business, it was in pitching Fortune 500 companies for corporate sponsorships with my race cars, right? And then I met my husband who a year previous had just started his own brick and mortar physical therapy business. We've now been in business 19 years, well over a seven figure business, employed 15 people. Amazing. I had my little moment of getting lost. So on, I decided to start a network marketing company with uh, my own business with Beachbody. I also get start my certified life coaching business, all the things, but I struggled actually struggled a real lot. The first two years I spun my wheels. I spent more than I made. I cried more tears raising my businesses and my babies. Like I'm just going to be honest. Um, and I, I quit a hundred times. I really did. And then I finally took a good core look at what it was that worked for me in the past. We'd built a really great sponsorship opportunity with my race car. We'd built an amazing seven figure business with brick and mortar. Um, And I also took a look at what got me the success in the past, like that losing 20 pounds in six weeks. And I realized it was one focus, right? It was one focus. And this is where I created what I call the one thing formula. And it's at the base of everything that I teach inside the Millionaire Mompreneur Accelerator, which is my coaching industry. Um, But I like to, I like to give you all the, the good stuff first for free, because then you'll understand that, oh my gosh, if she gives this for free, right? That's what you get on the other side. Guys, I'm telling you this because I want you to pay attention, not just to what I'm saying, but how I'm saying it. There is nothing smarter than when you pay attention to those who are ahead of you, how they are doing things, the H-O-W. You can, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. You can learn so much from that, right? And so I give a lot for free because if I do, I know you will hands down know that I'll blow your mind and help you grow your million dollar business, right? On repeat with the paid stuff. So this one thing formula is really just focusing on one thing, one thing for you that you want, which isn't technically, I think on that clarity cash flow checklist, but having one result that you want to give your person and then giving that to just one specific person. I have stuff that could help men, women, moms, not moms, but I only speak to women who are moms in business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and giving them that one. So one result, one audience, um, you're making me question my own stuff here, David, (laughs) one (laughs) with, excuse me, with one offer and one marketing plan. 
When I say marketing plan, I mean, do not think that you need to be on every single platform. So what happens with people, a lot of times we do watch those that are ahead of us and we think they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're on Pinterest, they're on LinkedIn. Don't fall down that path. You will not succeed, right? We need to go all in in one place, 100%. So I even suggest starting with one freebie. When I say marketing plan, it's one social media place with one freebie that could potentially convert them. Now, if you go to my website, you would see three or four, right? I'm also a lot further along. I'm okay with that. But when you're starting, I want you to do just that one thing, one audience, one result, one product, one marketing plan for one year. If you do that, if you do that and you follow also all like the branding, marketing, and sales systems that I teach, this is what this is my guarantee to my women, right? I guarantee you'll build a six-figure business and set up a system that you can continue to scale. Mm-hmm. There's a lot that this sounds so simple. And a lot of times people will be like, mm, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm, and, and they'll pass up on it. Yeah. But when they actually show up for it, they actually get massive results to the point of in three days, when they finally stop talking about this and that and that, like they're three different products and they just talk about one, mm. they'll all of a sudden get five new clients. Mm-hmm. One of my girls is a travel agent, right? She finally stopped talking about Disney and Caribbean and cruises and this and that for one week. And she booked a full blown. She just did went all in in Disney. She booked a full blown Disney package at the beginning of the week. She got three new clarity calls for one and she booked another one at the end and she hadn't sold one in six months. Wow. 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 I'm not like trying to be obnoxious, but I want you to understand that that's that laser focus. We talk about you go all in with 100% action and belief. You will get 100% results. The problem is we do 10% here, 15 here, 20 there, 12 here. Mm -hmm. No wonder you are not getting the results that you want. Mm -hmm. You have the Millionaire Mompreneur Project podcast that we can, uh, we'll link to, and they can find all of your resources, of course, at your website, which is jesseharrisboughton.com. And that can be spelled a million different ways. So we'll link to that in the show notes, of (laughs) course. So if, um, if there is a, a woman who's listening, who's thinking about getting into business and she's going, I don't know, should I do this? Should I start my own business or not? Like, what would you say to her today? Yeah. So, um, I'm the person who tells you if there is something on your heart, it wasn't put there to tease you. It was put there for you to pursue, even if it doesn't become everything that you hope it will. Because at the very least, you will walk away without having that regret. There are so many things that I have tried that didn't work out as I hoped, but I no longer swooned over them. (laughs) You know what I mean? I was willing to let them go and move on to the next thing. And that's actually how I have evolved over the years into creating the Millionaire Mompreneur brand because my passion hasn't been about network marketing originally. It was always just to help that woman with a dream finally grow the life of their dreams with the business of their dreams without killing themselves, right? I want them to work just 20 hours a week like I do from anywhere. So lean in. And at the very least, if you don't know how to get started, message David, because maybe he'll have a great new clothing line that he'll be able to (laughs) offer you to work with us on. (laughs) I love it. Uh, I also want to mention, and we'll link to this in the show notes, your uh, free workbook. It's called the five deadly habits, keeping you from millionaire status. And we'll put that link in the show notes as well. If you're listening on iTunes, you can just swipe up on your phone and check out the link. So Jesse, thank you so much for your energy, your excitement, just bringing all of who you are to the table. Really appreciate it. Oh my gosh. It has been an absolute blessing and joy. Thank you, my friends.